Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of On the Paint Table. This is my weekly show about what I got finished and what I'm working on, where you can see sneak peeks of upcoming projects and take a look at what progress I made over the past week. Now this is my second last show for 2016. Um, I will have one more On the Paint Table next week and you can see me, I guess, paint my last few models for this year. Um, I'm currently with today's what I got finished, uh, sitting at 498 painted models for 2016 and 183 pieces of painted terrain. So yeah, what bird watchers would call a big year. <laughs> Um, and if you know anything about um, the uh, Girl Miniature Games uh, hobby resolutions page, you know that I've just set the bar that high for 2017. <laughs> so um, I usually talk about this in my last on the paint table for the year, uh, but if you guys want to check out the um, Girl Miniature Games 2016 hobby resolutions group, um, I'll link it in the video description below. It is a sort of just a accountability group where a bunch of us got together three or four years ago um, while I was still at Mini Wargaming. It was like something I off the cuff like mentioned in a sit and talk show. Um, and it just kind of blew up and people have been doing really, really well. There's probably, I think there's 300 and something people in the group. And of those 300 people, I would say 50 to 60 of them have been active like all year round. I think everybody was kind of active. A lot of people just kind of lurk and watch and see what other people are doing. Um, but 50 or 60 people had like really big, like all hundred plus model years. Um, and what you do is they start a thread. So you do your post, your initial post, and then you save it on Facebook so you can always find it again. Um, and you just keep updating that post over and over and over again. So everyone kind of has their own little like sticky post that goes through the year um, that shows what people got done. And yeah, and we just challenge ourselves and we set a new resolution every single year. So uh, this year's resolution was to beat last year's total, which I think was around 400. And I'm like 100 over now, so I have to, I have to beat that next year. So um, when you see what I have to work on next week, I'll probably end up... I would guess, I'm taking four or five days off, obviously for the holidays, I'm probably gonna end up around 507 miniatures. I'm at 498 right now, I have to have nine done by Friday. Um, and if I get those nine done, I've got like five or six more I might finish too. So anyway, let's take a look at what I got done. Um, I also have kind of a special thing to show you guys. Um, I made a joke on Facebook, and you'll see when you see it. So thing the first, we got finished a few more Batman miniatures. I got Green Arrow done. Um, he's a sidekick. This is one of the sidekick profiles for Green Arrow, but of course you can take sidekicks if you don't take a sidekick as a leader. So he can also lead my um, a, a Green Arrow team if he wants in the future, or he can be a sidekick for Batman. Um, it puts some blood damage into the group, which I found I really needed fighting guys with guns. <laughs> I also have uh, Alpha. He's one of the SWAT guys. Uh, he's got an assault rifle. Um, and that gives out blood damage, which is also a big deal. So I can actually knock guys out because the problem with the law forces, they don't kill people very often. Um, but Delta or sorry, Alpha here don't care. And he's going to assault rifle and, and makes things dead. Um, and then the Gotham city police woman, um, she's got her billy club, uh, and handcuffs and stuff. And she's another one of the, you can have multiples of these cops. Um, what I might do is just cause of like, I've got the two painted that have this stuff. I might find some other company miniatures of police officers that are in the same scale um, and add them, just to have the variations, as long as they don't have handguns, as long as they just have billy clubs and stuff, uh, and expand those as well. But there's three more um, for my Law Forces slash Green Arrow for Batman the Miniature Game. And here's what I spent the majority of the week paying this week, which is more reinforcements for my Bauhaus army for Warzone Resurrection, uh, second edition. So I got painted a unit of Etoile Martin, which is the uh, Dying Stars. They're a assault unit, uh, troop unit for the Bauhaus, um, and they've got their Gehenna Puker uh, flamer rock in there, and a bunch of guys with big machetes and pistols, um, all in resin. I have a unit of Hussar Juggernauts, which are like the power armor guys, big hydraulic power fists, flamethrowers, and SMGs, or little light machine guns. Um, they're pretty super sweet. I actually really like these models, and I can probably use them in other games too, but yeah, no, they're, they're, they're really beefy in the game. They're basically Terminators, uh, and they're like a, in between the um, basic Hussar infantry and the big walker, uh, what's he called, the Vulcan battle suit. So, he, and it's, what's funny is they're about the size of the old Vulcan battle suits in the, like, second edition of Warzone. Like, they're on 40 mil bases. They're probably a bit smaller, but, like, they're not far off from those Vulcan battle suits. Um, and yeah, no, they're super fun to paint. And then I finished a unit of Blitzers. These are actually Storm Blitzers, although you could use them as Blitzers as well. Um, the Blitzers are a troop unit if they're Blitzers, and if they're Storm Blitzers, they're a support unit in the Bahas Army list. So I'll probably use them as Storm Blitzers because they're slightly better. They're the elite version. Um, and they've got their big classic capes, their steel skull masks. Um, these are one of the units that didn't get re-sculpted in 2nd Edition Warzone, and so they've never really had a nice sculpt. 
And it was, oh no, sorry, they did. No, they did. They had some Kev White minis. That's right. And they all had their sticks of dynamite with like clocks on them. That's right. I'm thinking of the Wolf Head Blitzers. It didn't get resculpted. Yeah, they were only first edition minis for those. But yeah, I know. Um, these were a lot of fun to paint. Um, and they've got their classic like uh, MP40 style submachine guns. One's got a rocket launcher. And they've all got machetes and stuff too. Nice models. Um, really fun to paint. And they have an accessory too, which is a Stern Blitzer HMG uh, that I didn't get finished yet, which I hopefully will get finished for next week. We'll see. Um, but it's the last of the new units that I have to paint for my Bauhaus army. So I made a joke on Facebook that I was painting Bauhaus this week like it was 1997 and someone asked me what my painting looked like from 1997 and that's what I'm going to show you guys. So here it is, a 20 year old army that I painted in 1997, probably actually before 1997, I probably started painting it in like 95 or 96. But this is my Blood or my um, Raven Guard army uh, from 2nd Edition 40k, uh, all with 2nd Edition vehicles. Um, and with the exception of two miniatures, because at some point I must replace the sergeants, because they had metal sergeants. This is an original sergeant. It's one of the metal 2nd Edition sergeants. Um, but I used 3rd Edition sergeants, I think because I found they were too many points. I think probably when I started paying 3rd Edition 40k with this, I wasn't happy with how many points the sergeants were, and so I used the plastic sergeants that came in the box set um, to replace these guys with cheaper versions. So they didn't all have to have like power swords and stuff. Because like every second edition sergeant had like a power axe or a power sword or like something crazy. Um, the banners are all hand painted by me. The insignia are mostly hand painted by me. Some of it's decals. Um, and then my captain over here, which is the old Dark Angel captain, I converted up to be a Raven Guard captain. Um, and this is like this is in the '90s. Like this is before there was any fluff for Raven Guard. So like. I had to make everything up as I went along. They didn't even really have a color scheme. Like, there was no painted pictures of Raven Guard. There was not really anything in the books. Like, this is, like, the mid to late 90s. Um, yeah, I just thought it was cool. This is one of the legions that was in the, um, the, what is it, the Space Marine supplement for Dutch Titanicus, uh, which was Epic Space Marine. And this was what my Epic Space Marine army was. This is the army I did in 40K as well. Um, it had, and actually, believe it or not, this is actually a fairly big second edition army. Because, like, each of these, like, people, I don't think people remember, but each of these tactical squads is 300 points. That's 900 points right there before you give them any upgrades. Like, that's just with bolters. So once you start, like, ladling upgrades and stuff on them, they're probably 1,200 points for the three of them. And then there's a 150-point half squad here with heavy weapons. So that's probably 1,500 points. The captain was probably two to 300 points. Um, and then I've got each of these rhinos is 100 points back then. Uh, and on top, of, actually, that's funny because um, I actually replaced, if you look at it, at some point I tore off the single bolters that were on these and replaced them with storm bolters from the Lehman Russ. Because the Lehman Russ was the hot new vehicle that had just come out. <laughs> um, I actually think I built this storm bolter from scratch out of something because it doesn't look like the other ones. Yeah, I did. I, did. I made that magazine, I built it out of scratch. Uh, that's a dread, and these are dreadnought smoke launchers from the metal dreadnoughts. I don't even know how I got so many of those. <laughs> Probably in a bits box trade. Um, you get the crayon launcher, whirlwind over here, and a uh, Laz Plaz Razorback, which was all the hotness in second edition because this was like the newest tank. Um, and also these Rhino armor plates, uh, which I probably got later than the 90s. I don't know when they came out. They were probably very late 90s, like 98, 99. Uh, but these were super cool. And I think actually they might have been 99 because I think they came out with the Black Templars for third edition. I think this was a Black Templars upgrade. It was from Black Templars Army deal. Yep, 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 yep. So I added that probably later on. Um, and I think I actually had the Razorback, and then I bought another Rhino, and then made the, like, tore the, the Razorback turret off and stuck it on the new Rhino later on. Um, there it is. So this is, pro this is probably 2,000 points in second edition points. Um, but I've kept this army because, I don't know, there's, there's certain armies that, like, I, I think define periods in my wargaming hobby, and this is probably one of the first armies that I painted, like, as, like, a keeper army. Like, I painted each model, like, one model at a time and did a lot of conversion work on it. Um, and so, yeah, so like 17 year old me was super into this <laughs> and so I've hung on to it and it's like actually come to me with me to like a couple countries, um, as I've like traveled around a couple cities and, and lots of stuff, it just sits in a case, uh, and maybe someday someone will challenge me to a second edition throwback Thursday and we'll play a game that has like ridiculous amounts of cardboard in it. <laughs> and here's a look at stuff I've got coming up. So first things first, um, this stuff has to get painted for Friday cause we're going to give it a try on Friday. Me and my buddy Jay. Um, and this is my first Supreme team, Team Supreme, uh, for Pulp City. This is the Red Republic. Um, we got our hands on the Cold War uh, stuff for Pulp City, me and Jay, and he's doing all the uh, Team America stuff, and I'm doing all the Red Republic stuff. This is uh, right here, Dr. Hammer, the yeah, two big two power fists, um, his like bad guy team, he's like a leader. And then we've got Red Robots over here. 
Uh, we've got some, there's a Buzzbot and a Gunner Bot. So one's got like a, a gun, one's got like a chance arm. And we've got the Siberian, who's like a big Siberian tiger-y kind of guy uh, with an assault rifle. And he's like an infiltrator. We have the Uber Soldat, who's my sort of like semi-heavy big guy. Uh, big close combat monster with like kind of a floaty jump pack and then some big heavy armor. Um, this guy's the infiltrator or the traitor or something traitor. He's like a double agent. Um, and his whole jam is that uh, he's like a cheap gun guy with a assault rifle and um, he hands it support tokens. So he's a he's a support model. And then we got some minions. We've got Dr. Hammer's dogs, one of which is literally a chihuahua with tank tracks. I'm super excited to paint this guy. <laughs> They're like cybernetic dogs um, that are all armored up and stuff too. So this should be 12 levels um, of Supremes, which is about a standard game size. Uh, that we're gonna give uh, trying out um, the the Pulp City, uh, which I'm pretty excited about actually. Uh, if you haven't heard of Pulp City, you'll see a Let's Play for it in the relatively near future, um, and it's a. Um, sort of like a self-designed superhero game so no like major label superheroes what it is is it's like archetypes so you'll see like some homage superheroes and stuff like that uh but that means they can just do whatever they want and there's like all kinds of awesome factions and crazy pulp craziness so um yeah go check it out they've got a huge line of models um all kinds of different themes for like the superheroes and stuff this new one is cold war so it's like cold war um uh, sort of like Soviet style and uh, America, chest thumpy sort of like Team America style guys. Uh, and we're pretty excited to give it a go. So that has to get done for Friday. So these will definitely be the next nine models on the painting table. And if I can crank out all of those quick enough, I'm gonna try and get this stuff finished because I'm also playing Warzone on Friday. Um, and that's going to be uh, to finish up ye old Blitzer, Sturm Blitzer HMG. Um, it's probably gonna be the second thing I paint though because I've got a lot of points painted actually the Bauhaus stuff is really expensive So I don't know if I'll get it done in time for the game I definitely want to get these done though because these are objective markers these came with um, I actually did the Kickstarter for um, This is years ago now for the first edition of Warzone Resurrection because I had so many Warzone models and me and my buddy Jay played Warzone I just forgot to get the rulebook and they sent me some dice some Bauhaus dice and some Bauhaus um, objective markers as well And I think some Brotherhood ones because I have Brotherhood Army too that I haven't painted, but it's like an old metal Cowboy Brotherhood Army. Um, that's sort of like next, and then finally, if I have time, like if I somehow plow through all these models um, before next Friday and have something I'm looking to do, I'm gonna finish off Dark Knight Returns Batman. Um, and the reason for that is I actually had him, he was the first Batman I bought, and he's my least favorite Batman. I, I don't know if this is like a popular opinion or an unpopular opinion, but Christian Bale is the worst Batman. He has the worst Bat voice. I hate his Bat voice so much when he talks. As Batman, I just want to kill myself. All the Christopher Nolan Batman movies were good because of the villains, not because of the Batman. There, I said it. That's it. That's all. That's my opinion. Um, but in the game, he's amazing because he's the only Batman besides, and I'm not even joking, Adam West Batman that has a rest. So when he knocks somebody down, he can spend a movement in a special to actually handcuff and take him out of the game. Um, and you can't buy back cuffs for anybody else. So he has a rest which no other Batman has, and he's a, he's a halfway decent fighting Batman, so I'm gonna give him a go, because I had him already, I need to paint him up, because gives me a different Batman to try besides Batfleck, um, and and yeah, we'll give him a try. And I got Saber over here, um, this is Deathstroke's daughter, uh, if you don't know who Deathstroke is, then I don't know, go read some comic books, he's basically the DC version of Deadpool, um, uh, well actually, Deadpool is the Marvel version of Deathstroke, like I should say, to be more fair, um, although he's gone a different way now. Um, and then Stoker over here to finish off the last of my uh, unpainted metal um, uh, brewers for Guild Ball, although I need to get my hands on Quaff and Veteran Spigot, because that way I've got all the metals uh, before they start replacing them in plastic, and I want to make sure I get them before they go. Uh, so there it is. Hey, yeah, and if you haven't heard, uh, all the new teams coming out are in PVC, so I don't know if that means they're replacing them, but I know that there's a PVC team in kickoff for Brewers, so I want to make sure I have the metal ones, just so all my stuff's like the same. <laughs> so yeah, Quaff and, Quaff and Spigot, they're on my list. Um, and that's it, that's my If I Have Time stuff. So there you go, that was 483 through 498 for my models for this year. Uh, some Bauhaus and some more Batman miniatures. You get to have a sneak peek at some Blast from the Past minis. Uh, my Raven Guard Army from 2nd edition. Through 3rd edition, I played them in 3rd edition too. I actually played in the um, first War for, or the third War for Armageddon campaign, I think in 99 with them, where the Black Templars and the Salamanders, everybody were trying to take back Armageddon from Gazgul Thraka. Um, yeah, and then you saw some upcoming stuff. Pulp City, I'm pretty excited about. I, I'm actually, it, again, I'm not a huge fan of superhero games, but the Cold War thing is awesome because it's not 
really superheroes. It's like crazy Cold War super science stuff. So I'm pretty jazzed about it. Um, and I'm super jazzed to play Warzone because I spent a lot of time playing Warzone, and yeah, I'm just excited to play it. Uh, I'm excited to play it. I'm excited that I painted Warzone miniatures for the first time in almost 20 years. Um, and that, like, I need to play a contemporary version of Warzone again, because I had a lot of fun doing the Let's Play, um, but we've had all kinds of projects on the go, and getting back to it's going to be a blast. So, I hope you enjoyed that. We'll see you for one more on the paint table next week. You can see if I cracked my 500. I better crack my 500, or we're in trouble. I'm not going to get that stuff done on Friday. Um, but yeah, no, hopefully you'll, uh, you'll, get, you'll get to see the... Uh, the overage for 500. And if you haven't checked it out, check out the uh, Girl Miniature Games, um, what is it? It's Hobby Resolutions Group on Facebook, linked below. So we'll see you next week. Till then, I'm Ash. Have a good one.